Hey everyone, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We have reached episode 736. This is being recorded on August 16, 2023. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. Next week, we will be advertised by Boeing with episode 737, and I'm Josh Walrath. I'm the professional version of Brett Van Spurberg tonight. What does that mean? Because there's... I don't know. You already had RGB lighting. That makes you look like a streamer, kind of. Mm. I mean, mm. I'm gonna, tr- I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the professional version. I'm gonna see how that What's feels. That car on the monitor behind you. It's an R two D two R two. It's a, okay. it's one car from one of the R two driving games. I don't want to get ahead of myself. With uh, regards I, I, to I, what I game smell a humble might... bundle pick with oh, racing games. Oh, stop! Oh. I saw that ad earlier. I knew You're it. blowing Ooh, it up. You're blowing it up now. Okay, um, can't believe it. You've really way, stolen you can, my thunder on this one. You can help PC Perspective by going to patreon.com <laughs> slash PC per and become a patron of the PC per arts. And uh, we, we can't thank you enough. Your name here. You're you're the one. You're the well, one. actually, we, we could thank you enough and, and vociferously ad nauseum. Let's move okay, to so, Laramie, Wyoming for the food segment. Josh, take it away. So anyway, I, I had problems this week. Uh, my friend from college, best friend, good guy, great guy, sends his daughter to school at CSU. Still love him, but that's 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 such a bad, terrible decision. Uh, and so anyway, uh, he came up on Monday with his daughter, who is now a. CSU student, <clears throat> and uh, we we had born in the barn, but I didn't pick a picture because they wanted to go because Guy Fieri was there, but I didn't take a picture. I I had their their Chicago dog. It was extremely filling, but there's no no photo evidence of uh, such uh, encounter that I had on Monday night, which was okay because I, I suffered through the rest of that night for various reasons. However, today I did take my son down to Denver for an appointment and we stopped at noodle company we had noodles and you know what the noodles were still really good that was the spicy korean noodles with steak and uh pot stickers obviously uh, and pot you know stickers. it was awfully tasty sometimes you need to step away from a burger and try something different it actually had a lot of greens in it, some cilantro, mm. zucchini, cucumber, and uh, spicy. Well, actually, it wasn't all that spicy, but it was tasty. So it was well worth the $10 for that bowl of noodles and steak and spiciness and vegetables. And my doctor is probably congratulating me in the background on my good, uh, good eating behavior, not knowing that I had a Chicago dog on Monday. Let's move on to news. Videocards.com reporting AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 7995WX. It's been spotted. I think it's a Geekbench benchmark leak. It's a 96 core Threadripper. Zen 4 CPU cores up to 5 gigahertz somehow. Boost clock of 5.14, although this is being misreported. It looks like, uh, unless you believe the 7.97 gigahertz base frequency. (laughs) Might be a little bit of an issue here. But it's an HP workstation with a Threadripper Pro 7995WX spotted on the 16th. Uh, That's today. Okay, so among other changes to the Threadripper platform, says VideoCards.com, DDR5 with Threadripper for the first time. That makes sense. It's moving to Zen 4. It's Zen 4. They have no choice because that's the only memory they support on the architecture. Mm -hmm. But now it's cheap enough, so who cares? I was ah. wondering if I guess it'll probably be next generation that we'll see Threadripper that might be a combination of their 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 smaller L3 cache cores like the the Zen 4C with Zen 4 hybrid kind of setup or or what but it's coming to a fifteen thousand dollar workstation near you maybe you'll get one from Falcon Northwest to test I don't know I'll have to don't drop it have to ask them if we can borrow mm. one like uh, that would be actually the perfect thing to test out the rack you know the the uh, Falcon Northwest rack. Mm-hmm. It's a rack mount for you, I think, uh, computer. Okay. Uh, uh, best uh, CPU for Minecraft. Yeah, probably. And uh, Dwarf Fortress. 
Tim Tim Sweeney probably is getting one just so he can oh, render a real one on CPU entirely <laughs> at 120 frames per second at 1080p. <laughs> Sticking with video cards, you know mm-hmm. that AMD Ryzen processor that was uh, China market only, the Ryzen 5 7500F? Oh, you mean the one we said would totally never just stay in China and would start coming out to other places? Right. So then it's it's in Europe. And then, uh, I'll have to find the other link, but apparently it's also shown up in the U.S. I saw something at Tom's Hardware about it being available in the USA from Ooh. some specific seller. Uh, da, 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 da. Shop BLT <clears throat> selling it for our so one seventy six. What's the uh, which the, the CPU this one is derived from? Because they've deactivated a couple of IO dies. Seventy six hundred. The, per, per, uh, the parent ah the seventy six hundred. Okay. Was it or does it have an APU on it? The F. What does that mean? No graphics. It means F graphics. Okay, then. Starting to start to <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's not surprising that these parts they kind of a lot of things originate from china and it's kind of weird how they go all over the world they end up uh, being sold in other mm-hmm. places too you know you know what we haven't seen a whole lot of 5600 x3ds on different marketplaces yeah micro center's keeping a pretty pretty tight grasp on that one wendell sent one over to <laughs> of course I think it was kit guru so they got to yeah, do a review, yeah. but yeah, they did. But eBay doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't work well enough in that when you're in that that really tight margin area. Even with Micro Center grabbing it from and trying to sell it on eBay, it's it's they're just going to look at it and like I'm just going to get a 5800 X3D. Yeah, yeah. But this yeah. one's slower and you know, <laughs> has fewer cores. Get this, yeah. and it's like more exclusive. Do it. More exclusive. I had to buy this at Micro Center. (laughs) Apparently not everybody can do that. 5800 X3Ds out there for less than $300 all day long. That's the one. If you're on AM4, that's the one. And it's the last thing you'll need. Well, you know, a friend of mine who works at the same company of mine who actually works in Minneapolis, well, Golden Valley, he did get a 5600 X3D. And he's ecstatic about it. But, you know, he had a local Micro Center. So why not? If you got one local... It's worth the price. If you have to travel three hours when you consider gas, it's not worth the price. Mm. So there you have it. What's the gas in your neck of the woods, Josh? Four forty one for premium. Ninety one. Okay. Regular mm-hmm. unleaded is four dollars here right now. Three ninety nine nine. Yeah, it's bad. It's not good. No bueno. Yeah, tray over two bucks for a liter. No, it's, we can't do a, that conversion here. I'm sorry. It's two uh, liters. Close to six th- bucks a gallon. Oh, okay. It's communists. Let's move on. Here's a story from Serve the Home. It's been all over the news, though. Intel has terminated yeah. the tower acquisition. There was this... I'm not even sure what tower is. They're a chip maker, right? Tower Semiconductor. Intel was going to buy them last year. And then the regulators were scrutinizing this. And then it was rejected by China, apparently. So... They had to pay a they make, um, three million dollar termination fee. It it actually it would it's have been an interesting dollars. addition because Tower did non logic chips mm-hmm. and like on a RF, totally different uh, uh, processing power, than uh, Intel. Power management okay, so stuff, uh, sensors on, on a chip. If, if they had just gone from IFS customers' benefit from EDM technology, Avicii yeah. would you know be resurrected. And and you know Mouse Five would would uh, do this and and the the whole you know EDM sphere would would come and, and rally around and tell and they would have made billions but sadly they're one letter away from that type thing. Why do I why do you even let me talk? I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> thing stuff. It's, uh... You can read the Serve the Home article if you want to hear Patrick Kennedy's thoughts on the matter. And we'll move on to our next news story. This is going to come as a shock to a lot of people. Dell was uh, <laughs> overstating discounts. And they've been fined $6.5 million. I love the example here. It's this monitor. You, you get an Alienware Aurora computer and then, look, add to your cart 
60% off this monitor that we've marked up artificially to $2,389. Yours for just $955.60. <laughs> apparently, that was just, you know, fabricated. They just invented a that, marked that, up price. And, I mean, Australian money is <clears throat> funny, but a 25-inch monitor for $955, which is still around $580 US. Easily, yeah. That's yeah. just... You know, that's I, I think bad. we've grown... We've grown used to being lied to most of the time with the with any stores or online vendors sales dollars when we look at them and say this is on sale for real. But Dell, you broke the compact. We were willing to our disbelief would only go so far. You can't shine us on this hard and say this is on sale. This is sixty percent off and quadruple the the price and you know shine sunshine on yep. this and. We're we're conditioned oh to a certain amount of this because <laughs> bathroom, Amazon, mm-hmm. you know, Prime Days, everything gets marked mm, up in the weeks leading up to Prime Day, and then it gets marked back down. Everything's on sale. It's not really on sale. No, it's not. And we're willing to tolerate it to a certain degree. And that was my point: is that Dell, you, you broke the rule. You can't do it this hard. Yeah, they got fined six point five million. This is in Australia, so so that's yeah, nice places dollars. where actually right. people get uh, sued and successfully. Because they did the same thing over here. Like they'd have their Dell days and all of a sudden everything would shoot up by about 20% in price and then be 20% off. Maybe 25% mm-hmm. off. It's time for some mandatory art coverage. And we have to talk about it because there's been yet another driver update. This is a Wickle driver, 4644. It's the latest. And it's, there's a ton of stuff they've addressed Only here. Only 634 have, megs? It, yeah, oh, dude, gotten, it was one tighter. gigabyte. At one point, I it know. Used to be, listen, it keeps on like getting us. better and smaller. They they're yeah. getting more efficient. The stuff is look at all these. Compression uh, is better. Madden NFL twenty four and by, I didn't even know Madden was back on PC. I thought it was off PC for yeah. a while. I'll have to play it now that it's on PC. Josh Allen is uh is is the cover boy. He's the cover of, boy. Uh, okay. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. He only did it after the curse was broken by Patrick Mahomes and then Patrick. Mahomes I was going to say Tom Brady. So, yeah, check out the new ARC driver. We'll talk more about ARC in a little bit, by the way. Arc, Don't worry about that. Sure well. It's Security Corner, and this is a story from Tom's Hardware, and I think it's based on Pharonix testing. AMD's Inception fix causes up to 54% performance drop. <clears throat> it's not good. Mm. No. Ouch. It's not a downfall, but it's still not good. So times to complete things are going up. Performance... Going down. Oh man, look at this. Uh, here we are resizing an image, and, and it's it's every second counts. Obviously, when you're you're doing professional, you know, rendering and that sort of thing. But we're talking. But I mean, the problem is that it it's yet another speculative branch attack. So yeah, like if you're gonna slow down the speculative branch uh, prediction, you're gonna see <clears throat> lower performance. It's it's just a thing. And this is the one thing I didn't see is that, is this with a brand new Agisa code or is this with just uh, the mitigation the, applied? I'm trying to find the link to the Pharonix article. I should just go to their website. I thought they linked it. Oh, wow. It wasn't just image editing that I saw you flying past there. There were some uh, significant uh, database systems that were showing yes. uh, very bad degradation in performance. Yeah. Disappointing. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to eke out the performance again after they have to abandon speculative branching. It's a real boon. Well, they won't abandon it, but they'll figure out a way to lower the overhead. Because, I mean, more this one's part of the reason, if, if this is the one I remember correctly, is that uh, they call it Inception because it's all it's sort of leveraging the previous uh, speculative branch attacks that we've been seeing, Spectre and all those lovely ones. And we did... When they, those mitigations first came out, yeah, you had a huge hit on performance. But as they ironed out some of the kinks and figured out how to uh, change the microcode in such a way that you weren't vulnerable, well, until Inception comes around, uh, but you're still not losing the huge chunks of performance that you were. And hopefully that will take them not too long to figure out because, yeah, you're seeing some uh, serious hits. Yeah, it feels like Spectre meltdown all over again. Yeah, well, it's 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 leveraging those. It's just yeah. that what's a proof, really um, this, what this, proof this, of concept? This. What proof of concept is out there for Inception? 
I think it's all physics, uh, isn't it? So you actually have to have already infected the machine. Uh, okay. With something. Uh, and it's reading, I believe, registers at a fairly slow rate. Uh, okay, yeah, so it, it tricks the CPU into believing that an XOR instruction is a recursive call instruction. So, boom, and now you all of a sudden you, you're back into uh, buffers you really should not be in. But oh, I see. There's a graphic here with a phantom jump. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so that's, that's what they're <laughs> doing. So you've already return. got. Yeah. So you're already okay. in the system to be able to leverage this. But, you know, half a second for a 16 character password, six and a half for an RSA key is scary. But, yeah, um, it, it's pretty unlikely. And AMD sort of said, you know, it's potentially exploitable, but they haven't seen it outside of the research, of course. And they also pointed out that uh, Zen and Zen 2, they already fixed it. Or, you know, probably unintentionally, but managed to fix it. So just 3 and 4 mm-hmm. now. And, uh, yeah, so keep an eye on your motherboard's this is your choice. Keep your eye on for motherboard of BIOS updates or wait a couple of patches and then do it. This is the frustrating thing, though, because if you're a desktop user and this ends up being pushed out as an important security update, and then, you know, you need to be on the latest Ajisa version. Okay, so you go into group policy and you block driver updates from Windows Update. and uh, Well, right. You don't want it to automatically update the BIOS for sure. But my, my thinking is if you have... The performance you want from your desktop and you don't think you're vulnerable to something like this what if down the road an important update that gives you like better memory uh overclocking <clears throat> mm-hmm. support or something is linked to this inception fix and then there's no way to avoid the mitigations i feel like some of this stuff it people freak out about it but it's very very difficult to actually become infected i don't know what the vector even is it's in conjunction with something else they you've got to yeah break into the system first this it, itself doesn't allow someone to break in or it's not a remote code execution in that typical manner that um, like a side channel attack or something like that mm-hmm. it is it is more akin to now that i've broken into your system uh this is something that i might want to do on there to extract sensitive data mm-hmm. um and it was the proof of concept that they have is for Linux, but they mentioned that it should be portable because it's a microcode attack. Uh, the yeah. way the CPU interprets instructions should be portable to any OS. So it doesn't really matter what operating system you're running. So what you're saying is go back to PowerPC because then nothing runs on it. And oh, then you're absolutely. Like, oh, no, that's security absolutely. through obscurity. All right, I'm going to get a G5, a dual G5 <laughs> tower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stop there, mm-hmm. just go spark. Come on. Oh, there you oh, go. Spark. Really, Ultra really Spark. Esoteric. <laughs> Ultra Spark, yeah. Those are, aren't those expensive? The workstations even now? They the used to be very expensive. It's your safety. Yeah. You're paying for your safety here. I used to own a bunch of Sun 1U and 2U servers. Gone now. So in our next story, it turns out that hacking, is it Leo or Leo satellites? Just say low Earth orbit if you. Leo, satellites, yeah, Leo. Hacking those satellites call, is trivial. Don't call Leo. Leo. Yeah. No, it's like <laughs> the uh, movie with the alien in it. Leo. Oh, that Leo. It's that Lukey. terrible Atari game, right? Lukey. Oh, for that, yeah. I wasn't anywhere near that pit. Yeah. Well, screw you. You're at the bottom of it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy, what was the actual story behind this? <laughs> So wait, are you saying oh. that the satellites orbiting our Earth are not secure at all? Like ridiculously <laughs> <Uh-oh>. insecure. <laughs> this is this is silly talk. You've got to be kidding me. No, uh, you you really would assume, right? But uh, yeah, you know, if, if you're sending up a satellite, you would definitely secure it. But the thing is that you're already spending a huge amount of money compacting stuff down, hardening it making it just sort of work in a place where you can't really get up at four in the morning cursing and swearing and go over and turn the damn thing back on again because, well, it's uh, hard to reach and difficult to breathe up there. So apparently they've been skimping significantly 
on stuff. Uh, like we're talking like they, they're just doing the, the commercial ones. Uh, and the cube sat was one of the, uh, or one of the examples there is no authentication protocols whatsoever and it broadcasts unencrypted <clears throat> yeah 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 it just and the best thing is you can buy the damn thing right so if you actually wanted to you could buy a cubesat take it home tear apart that all of the equipment in it figure out what hardware vulnerabilities it is vulnerable to and well, without authentication protocols and not wanting encryption, you can just uh, beam on up there. And you got two ways of doing that. So the researcher who apparently now really regrets having released this at Black Hat because uh, he didn't want to tell everyone how horrific what he found was, is that for around mm-hmm. 10 grand, you can build your own functional ground station. Or... You could go to Amazon or Microsoft, who offer Ground Station as a service now. And you can literally just rent at a monthly rate your own Ground Station to be able to communicate into low Earth orbit on completely unencrypted satellites that really have no protection whatsoever. And again, you'd assume you can't buy satellite parts. I mean, they're protected, you know. They're, they're secret. If no, you can literally just go out, and if you've got the cash, you can buy one, tear it apart, probe it until you can find all of its secrets. And how then how long until we see a hacked satellite? How long? This sounds, uh, well, I think this that's incredibly why incredibly dangerous. It. I think that's why he regrets it. Now, thankfully, Jeez. the cubesats are tiny and have no propulsion in them, so it's not like you can turn them into a, a mass drive or like a. I, I, Any sort I of mass driver that, weapon or anything. I was yeah. thinking like, but oh, some of the larger horror. ones with attitude adjustment. I mean, the math is non-trivial, but yeah, you could. Uh, sort it's of not do that, so apparently. much math non-trivial, but it's the it's it's the control programming. I mean, you hack something, and you know, a lot of guys in like you know Linux and what they they understand how. TCP IP works. They understand how, you know, firewalls work, things like that. But when you're talking about programming for attitude adjustment with cold nitrogen thrusters, it might be a little bit different. It's going to, the physics so. going to require, the physics okay, so, so anyway, so. They, they may find a command and execute it. And mm-hmm. next thing you know, it, it like starts rolling out of, Control and right. they, it they de- can't deorbits. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah so what it's, if their master is uh, a Kerbal Space Program? Oh well, yeah, that uh, KSP two <laughs> point oh. Yeah, just, yeah, they're, they're right up. <laughs> These on two there. go together very scarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, the command and control is is very different, especially with stuff oh, like yes. that. I mean, it's. I mean, every everybody knows and can look up on YouTube how to do something on in Ubuntu and in a very you know, network type way of taking control of things. But when you're talking about programming that you don't have source code for of, I mean, it's, it's a giant black box. And so it's, it's different. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, there aren't smart people who can't do it. Like if they got a hold of, you know, a cast off satellite that, that, you know, cube oh, satellite that, that, that was, it. you know, like thrown in the garbage essentially or, or taken. <laughs> For ten, can't then they can do apparently. reverse engineering. Oh, that's the ground again, station. The cube's not cheaper. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, it's it's, right. it's non trap non trivial. Anyway, I'm just trying to make you a happy feeling, happy, happy thoughts. Yeah. Mm, happy, happy thoughts. thoughts. That, like, that hey, if you're have, worried about your security you know, online, you use a VPN. Ten tons, you know, satellites tumbling. From Earth, Pri- private Earth. Uh, private protocols are reverse engineered all the time. It's a matter of course. So you're in a you use a VPN because you're worried about your security you, and there's there's no way idea. there's yeah. no way that your VPN oh, is vulnerable to what? tunnel crack the privacy menacing what? tunnel crack attack. Oh no! This is I like I was reading this and I still think I'm missing something. Because it can't be this ridiculous. It really can't. And I hope somebody got uh, 
the joke I made with that picture on uh, the news post I made. So it's a, researchers tested 60 VPNs for everything, iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And they found that they're vulnerable to two attacks. The first one they called local net. And so VPNs are often configured to allow your, uh, like a client to route local networks, right? Because you're, you're, you still want to be able to talk to stuff that's around you, even though you're on a like VPN. Like your printer. Although the, I, yeah. Right. I, I always so, called this split tunneling, but yeah. Yeah, split tunneling, Yeah, but except it's apparently not, because if someone has control of the Wi-Fi network you're connecting to, they can assign a public IP and subnet address to a computer that is the same as the VPN tunnel. Oh. And so now you're not being, you're not, so nothing's interfering with you going to the VPN tunnel, but the thing is that your traffic also goes there and they can do whatever they want with it. And the second one is sort of leads on to that one. They're calling this one server IP. I mean, because you often don't want to double encrypt, you know, a VPN, if you're hitting something, which is an HTTPS, you're actually sending uh, more or less unencrypted packets along the VPN tunnel. And then they're encrypted after they go out. So again, you spoof DNS of that VPN that you're hitting. So you actually need to know what VPN address you're going to. But with the first one, because they're already on your Wi-Fi network and you've already sort of shunted stuff off to do the local network connection stuff, it's now set a route and then you put on a routing rule. So everything going to the VPN and coming back from the VPN is also going to that spoofed IP address. And because they don't like encrypting on the way back, it's most likely unencrypted for them. And I, I just, there has to be something wrong with this because this is just too basic a flaw for no one to have noticed yet. But yeah, that's just terrifying. And uh, Android seems did like about the best. Apple did the seems worst. Seems like you could wait. You could wait for someone to spin up a tunnel on your on a network you control. Look at the IP addresses they're using, and start. You'll see what you IP spoof. is trying to grab. Yeah. Yep, you could spoof the remote end, and suddenly you're getting the same traffic as the as the quote unquote tunneled end is at your IP your IP with whatever vacuuming service you want for studying the traffic at your leisure later on yeah. and pulling Which out may or the may not be encrypted. Bits. Right. So they recommend, you know, if you're using SSH over VPN, that's still going to be encrypted in this, you're in cool. this uh, crack hack yeah. trace case. Or if you're accessing uh, like corporate websites over HTTPS, which is probably a good practice anyway, all sites should be HTTPS now for God's sakes. They can't hack that traffic either. But there's many, many cases on uh, mail, you know, for instance, not always secure. And you're pulling your messages over, you're sending your passwords over, um, still plenty of uh, stuff in the clear that could potentially be useful. Yeah, like this is just, but it's such basic level stuff that I can't believe it hasn't been spotted before or that they're seeing something that's only in selective circumstances, but that's the problem is that they tested everything. Like the, uh, one of the things they pointed out was Cisco secure client, any connect VPN, which, you know, no one on the planet uses at all. <laughs> the iOS version is vulnerable, but the Android isn't. So it's like, yeah, there, there's something that just seems wrong about this, but at the same time, it's utterly horrifying because yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah, this, this is a thing. So yeah, follow through on Tunnel Crack if you really want to make your life a lot worse. But nasty. If you don't, someone else will. Like like Microsoft, for example, because they are changing the terms <laughs> of their Bing AI services. Now everybody, of course, is on Bing, and your Windows desktop just looks like an old active desktop with a big Bing search bar right in the middle of it. <laughs> well, apparently True. they're not just uh, as if. They weren't already, but now, according to their terms, they're going to start storing your inputs to the service. And the, re and the results. Were they doing this already? Were they monitoring one side or the other? But I, I'm sure that it's... Uh, well, now they're telling you. Company, 
<laughs> yeah. Generally, like when a company like this comes out with a, oh, by the way, we're changing it to let you know that we're uh, recording everything that you do there to ensure that, you know, you're not abusing the system or that horrible things aren't happening. It usually means they got caught already harvesting your data and they just sort of had to say, no, it's, it's, it's for right. quality of service and your own protection. Mm-hmm. Now, exactly. I really think you're skipping <clears throat> over. It's for your own good, your own protection. Think of the children. Um, think exactly. Think of the children. So one too many people said, and I love this example, sing me a lullaby about making napalm. You know, I think that's that uh, links in just there. protecting you. Yes. They're, they're asking, we want that not to happen. So we're going to capture everything and we'll sort it out later whether we want to uh link this back to you for any particular purpose or turn that over to any agency that might ask but the other one is even worse if you ask Bing something innocently and it goes out and it as as these large language models have been prone to do steals a whole bunch of proprietary information uh that either someone leaked up to it or that it just managed to find an unsecure database and grabbed it. Sure. And sure. Called it. you get, you get that as an answer and you have no clue about the fact that the large language model stole that information. Uh, Microsoft is no longer legally liable for that. You are, it's your fault. You searched for it and it's your fault that their bot brought it back and then you published it. So they're tossing all the, and I, we'll wait to see until this hands up in court. But for now, that, that's what the agreement says, is that by using Bing AI services, you are now legally responsible for anything it might spit out. Just another and reason just to really ignore cool. LLMs and just go about your business. Yeah. It's okay. The rest of it was about uh, not using it to develop your own AI. But I'm just thinking that I'd write up like a really nice looking interface program and sell it as it's, Jeremy Hellstrom's brand new AI service. And all it does is go to Bing and ask the question and then spit back the answer that Bing gives, except it's, it's branded me. So technically, I haven't developed my own AI, have I? I'm not breaching the terms of agreement. I'm just using yours. Interesting. If you could anonymous, anonymously create an AI that works on your behalf, it's, it's like laundering yourself. But for now, (laughs) let's pause for just a moment to hear from this week's podcast sponsor. You ever wonder where those systems that seem to know way too much about you get their information? Data brokers are pulling that intel and knowledge about you from public sources and all kinds of social media systems that you interact with. Then they're aggregating it and selling it out to other agencies. You and your information are now the product. This includes your relationships, relatives, or other connections, your job history, birthdays, past and current physical mailing addresses, or even phone numbers. It's all out there. It's a difficult task to gain some control over this personal info. The Delete Me service is set up to help you with just that, on the lighter side of the web anyway. Delete Me had given me their system a run through to see how it worked. After gathering my personal information to seed their inquiries, Delete Me contacted over 40 separate data brokers to locate my records and then make removal requests on my behalf. In order to operate, those data brokers need to provide that mechanism, but they don't always make it easy to do. Delete Me works on your behalf, saving hours of finding the forms and properly composing the requests to get you removed from those data broker systems, obviously freeing up time and energy to do way better things. I had a few questions after my first report was generated and contacted Delete Me. I appreciated the fast responses to my requests for further investigation on removing my personal data with several brokers they were researching. Decide that data privacy is also important to you and take steps to clearing out your personal data using Delete Me. Now get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash PCP and use promo code PCP20. The way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash PCP and use promo code PCP20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash PCP promo code PCP20. Let's move on to gaming quick hits and uh, Starfield. You've heard about it. It's being teased some more. Is this a bad quality animation again, or is this actually going to be some 3D game engine stuff? Well, Jeremy set us up to say never pre-order. Not sure I understand the uh, that, well, why that was the subtitle mantra. of this one. Never. <laughs> it is. Well, don't give them your money. That's- that's why they did this whole asking anything on Discord was to build up to oh. the, the the hype and you know convince people that uh, you got to go out and pre-order it because it's going to be amazing and there won't be any bugs in this Bethesda game at all at release. It will be perfect. 
because uh, I was actually making fun of uh, my upstairs neighbor because he was apparently participating in this, and I had to scream up and remind him not to pre-order. When, when can uh, we so start yeah. Dell, Dell discount suing these people for this sort of talk? I'm sorry, go on. Yeah. So it was the the lead and the guy that uh, did most of the stories. So the, the quests, rather. And they, they sort of talked about, you know, the, the regular stuff you'd assume, like, oh, yes, you can buy houses. Some come through quests and some you have to buy. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, one of the things they brought out was that you can't actually do a pure pacifist run. Apparently there is some key character in the game which needs to die for you to be able to finish it. Even though there are uh, non-lethal weapons and ways of talking yourself out of combat. Uh, one thing that was interesting is they, they went far back. Uh, I don't know if you remember the first two Fallout games and you sort of ended up getting addicted to stim packs and you started becoming a drug runner just to be able to afford to feed your addiction. So yeah, they're going to have Millennium Falcon style uh, hidden passage or hidden cargo containers that you can buy and install in your ship so that you can uh, become uh, a drug runner or they, they, there was mention of organ smuggling, which may or may not have been a joke apparently. And well, if you get caught, it's the usual Bethesda go to jail, uh, bribe the officer, or, sorry, pay a fine, uh, or try and bugger off or kill everyone in the system. So it's, there was a lot of uh, stuff revealed. Uh, one of the things that worries me is that they're saying there's over 20 companions that you can hire. That seems like a lot. But uh, hey, we'll see. Maybe they pull it off this time. There is always a first time. <laughs> In our next gaming quick hit, it's something from Humble Bundle. It's the ultimate racing sim bundle. They're taking a victory lap on this one, right, Brett? Oh, they're putting you know, the pedal to the I metal. Saw, I saw what you did there. Strap in, everybody. It's time for racing sims. So for as little as $13, get all seven games in this ultimate racing sim bundle from our favorite place, the Humble Bundle. R2. What's the NASCAR Heats, one? Drift 21. Keep keep scrolling a bit. Let's see what that seventh one is. Uh, Automobilista. Okay. Automobilista. AB2. A lot of VR support. They're, it's good. R Factor 2. Yeah, good. So this ACC. Drift 21. Both of them. AC, ACC. Fantastic. Assetto Corsa. Yep. yep. ACC. Both of those. Hey, you want to beat up your um, video card? This is this is a lot of gaming action, uh, gaming racing action, I should say, for thirteen dollars. So the value is there yeah. if yeah. you like this sort of game. And the mods for AC and ACC are impressive. So you have nearly a, you know, even though AC was released in like twenty fourteen, and it looks like a twenty fourteen game, uh, the mods are amazing for it and. You can quickly get it up to 2022 type specs of graphical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Graphics. Yeah. Say, speaking of graphics, <laughs> fidelity. Sorry. Let's let's move on <laughs> to our featured review of the week, and we we like to talk about Intel Art Graphics here. Uh, and that's just because we have friends at Intel Graphics Division mm. or anything. But well, we have acquaintances. We do. Yeah, are, are they really friends still, or are they just uh... you know previously associated but no longer? But look at this. This is a, one of the limited edition graphics cards featuring Ooh. some uh, fingerprints on it right there. But nice, limited nice. edition. Uh, there's other vendors out there. There's uh, Sparkle. Just join the fray. They have an Arc Seven A Seven Fifty graphics card out there, and uh, Asrock, Acer Predator. But I was looking at the limited edition because that's what I was sent for review by Intel. Full disclosure, they sent this sample. No money changed hands, but they sent the sample. That's what happens in this industry is you get sampled because they want uh, press coverage. And that's how that's how the industry works. Shocking. Uh, Strange. So, it works. Yeah. Yep. Here's, the, here's the card. And it's a dual slot, dual fan card. It's very, very heavy, actually, for its size. Very dense heat sink. And it is based on the same GPU. This is the A750 that I tested. Same GPU 
as the A770. And actually, something interesting I did not realize until I was making this chart. If you go off and search for specs for the A770 versus the A750, there's actually a difference between the two different versions of the A770 beyond just the amount of VRAM. One of them has faster GDDR6. So if you get the 16 gigabyte version, Oh, look at that memory data rate. Yeah, 17.5 gigabit mm. per second with the 16 <clears throat> gig. Only mm -hmm. 16 gigabit per second Ooh. with the 8 gig, which matches the A750. There is very little difference between the A750 and the 8 gigabyte version of the A770. Uh, what the difference is, is about 13% fewer cores. But the clock speeds are very similar. They're within 50 megahertz of each other. And they have the same memory bandwidth. And they're based on the same GPU. Well, you get a little bit zippier. 560. Yeah. So anyway, interesting there. But the A750, I kind of understood as I was doing this testing why they're not really promoting A770 that hard. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to actually discontinue the A770. Certainly there are companies out there that are, that are still selling it. I'll be testing the A770 soon. I want to, I want to do that at 1440. This is all 1080p mainstream testing of this card and trying to use just eight gigabyte cards. I did retest the 2060, which is only a six gigabyte card. Oh, and there was that an eight and a six for PCI power. Yeah, it's an 2060 eight, super. It, yeah, it, it requires an eight pin and a six pin. Huh, interesting. It's not that interesting? The different colored slots. Yeah. Mm. And on the mm. but this is a this is an engineering sample. This is maybe not the the final version of it. Uh, feast your eyes on this tech power up GPU Z screenshot. You can see the driver version that I was using, which is of course out of date. We talked already about the I think it's forty six forty four. I tested on forty five seventy five. I started testing in mid July, and this driver was from July eleven. So take this as just I call this a snapshot. This is not a definitive look at performance. This is simply a moment in time, a snapshot of mainstream Intel Arc performance with some uh, games. Now, first we'll look at synthetics. This is on our mainstream platform, by the way. And the mainstream platform that I put together is a Core i5-13600K, but I do have the 13600K set to uh, stock power limits. I manually enforced uh, power limit. It's using DDR4, so it's... Uh, Pretty, you know, mid-range as far as a gaming system goes, but these are great uh, processors for gaming. Anyway, here's a look at the 3D Mark results first, just to give you an idea of how well optimized, how brilliantly these cards perform in 3D Mark. Uh, they're, it's fantastic. Now, UL Have states, you tried changing the executable name? <laughs> UL states that, quote, any driver released prior to, you know, 31.0.101.3277 is not approved, end quote. And that's because there was some extra enhancements going on back then. Anyway, the results, if you're listening, the ARC A750 was third on the list, just behind a 6700 XT and above a 3060 Ti and in Time Spy. And then if you moved up to the DXR test, the DirectX Ultimate 3D Mark Speedway. And well, well above the 4060, I might add, just in case. Yeah. And and here in Speedway, it's it's in the middle of the chart, but it's still beating cards like the RX 7600. And it's right behind the 6700 XT again. That's not realistic. And I, it, you're not going to see that on the charts to follow, mostly. But... Mostly. Yeah. Anyway, the first... I just did this in alphabetical order. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes up first. And this was the worst showing possible for this card. This uh, game is not Ooh. well optimized with ARC drivers. But that's the thing. Like I did this two or three driver revisions ago. And who knows what the performance would look like today. But here it wasn't even beating a 2060. It was about five, six frames behind it at 1080 Eep. high. I'm sorry, very high. I changed it to very high because everything was hitting like 150, 160 frames per second. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla... Very high. This is DirectX 12. Moving on to Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, everyone's favorite Ooh, uh, benchmark. CPU benchmark? Well, kind of. I did GPU focused, so in theory. Okay. But here the arc is fifth or fourth from the bottom of the list. It's right behind a 4060, ahead of a 6600, ahead of a 3060. So not bad. I mean, considering this is a $249 card at full price, but that wasn't the best showing. Here's a better example. Cyberpunk 2077. 1080 again. DirectX 12, of course. No, no, no RT. 
No RT. No or, DLSS. Or, well, or, or XLSS. SS, yep. right. All those no, things. No FSR. And it's not too far behind a 4060. It's ahead of a 6600 XT. It's ahead of impressive. a 3060. Very impressive performance. It, and, and really, it's like Josh has been talking about this for a while. ARC is actually quite capable when it comes to ray tracing. So in those DXR ray trace tests, you're going to see it outperform some of the AMD cards and, and perform alongside some of the NVIDIA cards, which have, of course, those dedicated tensor and... RT cores. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Here we go, F122. And this was run at the high preset also. TAA, no DLSS or anything like that. 16 XAA. Now, the only difference between the cards was HBO, HBAO plus for NVIDIA. That's what it defaults to. I switched to ASSAO for AMD, and then I went, went ahead and did that again for the Intel cards. Everything else is the same between all the cards in this test. And I really need to test this one at Ultra because 1080 high is uh, just not enough because these cards are all well over 160, 180 frames per second. So I just called this my high refresh monitor benchmark to save face. <laughs> and there it is right behind a 6600 XT. Actually, that card is uh, doing quite well in this test. 211 frames per second versus ARC's uh, 204.97. So all of these... Oh, that's cards, unplayable. All these cards are going to give you <laughs> that 144 plus frame rate you crave from your ultra-wide, high-refresh, free-sync monitor. Um, but can I just stop here for a second and talk about the Radeon RX 7600? We didn't Make a big deal. There's a YouTube launch. commenter that would really like you to do that. Actually, it was it was boring. Correct. It was not a you know it's two hundred sixty nine dollar card, eight gigabytes of memory in current year. This seventy six hundred is an absolute monster at ten eighty high gaming like this. It's consistently in the top like four or so on the chart, and it's two hundred sixty nine dollars. Anyway, uh, what's the next game? Far Cry Six. Okay, this is one of those games that makes the argument for eight gigabytes of memory not being enough. I had to rerun all the tests because I originally was testing Far Cry 6 at 1080 high with HD textures enabled, and that actually exceeds eight gigabytes. Oh. So even at 1080 high, if you have those HD textures, you've got to have more VRAM. So I went back and retested it without the HD textures enabled. And here, the A750, not a great showing. Behind the 3060 this time, still ahead of the 2060 though. Here's N Walker. It didn't have a very mm. consistent frame rate. That was the uh, worst one percent lows oh. of that oh. benchmark. But anyway, uh, don't worry. The driver fixed that. Yeah, look at Metro Exodus Enhanced oh Edition my. drivers. I could not believe this result. I didn't believe it, so I went back and I checked. I'm like, no way. This is the this is the result from the original version, not the oh. Enhanced Edition. Are, no, are you original, LTT in me? I in, I must Sorry. be. I, this is probably <laughs> just inept benchmarking. I checked, though. I mean, I had three runs. It was definitely the Enhanced Edition. It was 1080, DX12, high preset. There is no lower preset with the benchmark tool than high preset with Enhanced Edition. So I don't know what happened here, but somehow the A750, well, it's still 10 frames per second slower than a 4060 Ti, but it was right up there in second place on the charts. So uh, human error, possibly, but it's fun to look at you know, the possibilities of what driver optimization could do for a game. And this is a DXR heavy benchmark and, the, and ARC yep. has an advantage there over a lot of these cards, but one would not expect it to be faster than a 3060 Ti very often. But maybe here it fulfills that promise of ARC being at around the 3070 level. Yeah. So. Well, Metro is a weird game because like my 6800 XT loves it. It doesn't yeah. care about the ray tracing at all. They just, yep, here you go. Yeah. I but, mean, it's, you know, it, it is a still a big die. It's yeah, you it know, kind of the size of a 4080. Come but, from. of course, you know, 4080 is on 4 nanometer, and this is on 6, yeah, right? Yeah, it's on 6, yep. Yeah. It's 400 so, millimeters you know, squared it, on it, 6 it, nanometer. Yeah, it's it's still a, a rather large GPU. And um, they've packed the features in. And I know that, like, uh, Pugent uh, Computers, Pugent? Pugent Sound Computers, those guys, they do a lot of uh, actual real heavy-duty testing. And the uh, the ARC series comes out 
really well. I mean, they are so well-rounded in everything they do that, um, you know, it's, it's, they don't excel at any one thing, but you know, they got, they, they were like among the first with AV one. Is it AV one? Encoding. Yeah. That, yeah. that yeah. arc three yeah. eighty became this ultimate second GPU just yeah. to do your streaming, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and it does better than a 4060 or 4060 TI, uh, in that. And it's a much cheaper part. Um, you know, ray tracing does very, very well. It matches the top when DXR type titles, when you enable it. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an arc evangelist, but, you know, software makes the world go round. And Intel is, is catching up there. But this is, you know, a part with billions of transistors. And they're kind of starting from scratch and recreating their entire software stack. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be issues. Um, you know, a year ago when these released, uh, support for a lot of these productivity uh, applications that will actually utilize the GPU, they didn't support. Now they are. And now they're they're scoring really high on these because, again, it is just such a well-rounded part that it like does everything really nicely. So, um, you know, just to show my, this is the, uh, this is a retail version of the arc and it's got the two different colored ports and I don't know why they did it, but well, it they does. did. This is okay. 770. And, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of build, this thing is nice and heavy. It stays pretty cool. It's, it is a really nice part, and you know I'm happy I have one because many many years ago I I sold my i740 back in 1998, and I shouldn't have I I should have kept hold of that because you know why not it takes up space and it's worth nothing, but you know <laughs> this is the same thing. It's a really a really good card, and every software update provides something better. And I don't think it's ever going to be a world beater. These this first generation of Arc Mage is that what it was? Arc Mage Alchemist. Alchemist. Battle Mage is coming up next. Battle yeah. Mage is next. Yeah, Arc mm-hmm. Alchemist. Big Battle Mage. Right. Big Battle yeah. Mage. Yeah, uh, it's it's not going to be a world beater, <clears throat> but it's a really solid first step, and they continue to improve the drivers dramatically. I mean, if you go back four months and compare performance, there's five to 10% across the board. And plus there are other areas where they improve dramatically just because they're finally getting around to supporting it. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I have a couple of friends that bought a, a 750 and at first it was a little, it was a little crunchy for them, a little troublesome, but you know, they, they kind of did the whole enthusiast thing where they, you know, mixed and matched drivers to get the best experience. And no, they're, they're ecstatic about their buys because they just work so well in many, many applications they play. And it's just getting better. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic that Intel is in here because looking at where NVIDIA is and AMD is, it needs a little bit of shakeup. One mm-hmm. area where it could use some help oh, is power. Yeah, it's a, it's a six nanometer part. Yeah, it's here. We're looking at a power Which draw is chart kind where of it's optimized seven nanometer. Yeah, the six n. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's consistently drawing well over two twenty five. It's peaking above two hundred fifty watts under load. But look at the the smaller squiggly lines here. Uh, it never drops below like 40, 45 watts at idle. It was, and this is on a 60 hertz 1080p display. This little Dell display I was using for the 1080p testing. I'm not doing multi monitor here. It's just one monitor. And this was the case with the ultra wide I was testing on it with originally. And then with the smaller monitor, it just never like gates down to these. Low, I'm used to single digit numbers with AMD and NVIDIA cards. I look over at the power meter and it's like seven watts, eight watts. 
this thing was like 42 watts and I'm just, I'm not doing anything on a desktop and I haven't opened up an application yet. So that that's concerning. I don't know if they can do anything about that with future driver updates. One would think that, you know, they've had all this time and maybe this is just what it is. Maybe the next generation will be more power efficient, but it's very high idle power draw. Uh, didn't they talk about a driver tweak that you could do to cut that back? There's something about variable. Well, that was AM, AMD was a little AMD. while ago. Was it? Okay. Yeah, that had and a, AMD only has had, that had an with, idle power with, issue. Uh, isn't it with the was it um, multiple monitors or was it with a multi sync? One of them is I don't remember. There was I thought it was high funny. refresh slash multi monitor yes. issue with RDNA. Yeah, it was both. You had uh, to have a high refresh and multi monitor because then <laughs> one of them was rendering absolutely nothing, but it's still feeding it as if it was a high refresh monitor to display your desktop that's doing hmm. nothing. Maybe, maybe someone should ping and tell and say, maybe you should look at this. It yeah. Is. Well, once now that our definitive review has been published, I'm sure they'll be <laughs> immediately. So in the conclusion, I say, just buy it. You know, what other, other oh. outlets say that. So why can't we? I'm just kidding. Yep. You should decide for yourself if you want to buy something. And then in the, the final paragraph here that no one will read, uh, I found that it just works. Also, if you find it on sale, the more you buy, the more you save. So, you know, <laughs> just buy you it. You did just say so just, so buy, just them. buy it. Yeah. I'm impressed. Does it support you, multi-GPU? You really went for broke on that one. It supports uh, all the GPUs, all the displays. Okay. No, it's, it's, so buy it's three or four of them and just swap them in there. If you want lots of monitors, sure. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> no, there's no multi-GPU advantage, no. I don't think, but it's uh, you can support... Yeah. Full monitors out of this thing, so. But it's nice to see someone taking over uh, what Matrox used to do. Yes, exactly. Not necessarily super high performance, but hey, you've got four monitors, eight monitors. You need, we got you, boy. The really, I'll the tell f- you the A three eighty. So as Sebastian said, A three eighty is an excellent secondary yep. monitor hub. And and streaming and AV one, yeah, it's your AV one engine. Yeah. It's your it's your extra monitors. It and it doesn't really have. If you look at the specs for that, it doesn't have the the gaming chops. You would not want an A three eighty for your gaming. It's a ninety six bit memory interface. It's it's a tiny chip. It's only one hundred and twenty eight of those um, XE engines. So one hundred or effectively a thousand twenty four shading units. But I mean seventy five watts. They, they're like one hundred fifty bucks. It's a great okay. You know, if, if if you're not playing games and you just want multi monitor, yeah. streaming stuff, that is that is so inexpensive for what you get. Uh, so the pricing thing: two hundred sixty nine dollars for the RX seventy six hundred. The seventy six hundred is so good for two sixty nine at ten eighty gaming like this that it would be. A tough sell to say, well, get a lower performing art card for twenty dollars less. Like, how much do you need to save twenty dollars? But thankfully, you don't have to pay two forty nine, which had been kind of the going rate, even though this card officially launched, I guess, at two eighty nine. You can find them right now. For example, at uh, B and H has it for two nineteen ninety nine for this exact limited edition card. That's that's a damn good deal. It is. And then over on Newegg, Azrock, the Azrock model is two twenty nine. The Sparkle card that just came out is two thirty nine. That hasn't been discounted yet. Those are just regular prices. So we will we will see. Because I'm thinking if you get closer to one ninety nine, that's when you get to this territory where I am not worried about seventy six hundred performance and what I might be leaving on the table because I'm saving, you know, seventy bucks. And that's a big deal when you're in this price segment. Every fifty dollars is a big deal in the ten eighty gaming segment. So Hopefully these stick around, drivers mature, and when the next generation Battle Mage stuff comes off, uh, comes out, then you've got access to previous gen stuff, dirt cheap, and it's a it's a solid car. I didn't have any games crash on me. I didn't have any weird black screen issues. I didn't have any. I literally did not have a single driver crash. The I've waited a long time to do this review, and every time I would get started, there'd be another update. I'm like, oh, I'll wait. But you, it's just a snapshot because. Like I said, there's been two or three graphics driver revisions since this one. They're still working on stuff. They'll still be improving stuff throughout the year. They clearly are not giving up on graphics, which is fantastic. 
because we have oh, because they've, now. they've got Battle Mage coming out next year, and yeah. they need to yep. continue the software march to improve what they have because AMD is not far from NVIDIA and NVIDIA is still the gold standard in drivers and software. And uh, yeah, they're going to keep doing it. And plus, you know, when you get one of the cards, it's got this velvety matte type. I mean, you feel it and it's just, just awesome. But as a collector, no no fingerprints. Yeah, no fingerprints. No fingerprints. Doesn't the soft touch plastic worry you? Because all that stuff eventually melts, and they'll be scrubbing this thing with baking soda to get the sticky residue off. (laughs) Makes me happy. But it makes me happy now. You know, feeling it against my bare skin. Alone. (laughs) I'll be in my bunk. Don't you? Don't you normally do this in the dark? Isn't it normally darker in there? Uh, with this, and that's he's got an RGB preset for it. Oh, this is like a light show. Da, well, the 750 doesn't have RGB, so you know. 750. Oh, no, I meant his room. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. those blue yeah. lights change to a much sexier. Uh, yeah, I go, it's all red. Yep, the yep. lights all turn red, which is weird because it's not an AMD product, so it has to stay blue. Yeah, it would Let's be make it an work. Intel blue color. Yeah. It's the blue light special. I just have like a, a, a strobe light in here and I just put on like Muzak and pretend that I'm in Kmart. It's a weird yeah. fetish. Let's let's now. go to picks of the week, please. Right now. Uh Josh, please get us started. Me? Yes. Uh you know what? You need more spice in your life. You honest to goodness need more spice. And you know what the way to start at that? Just buy this. It is the entire line of Tabasco spices 55 bucks it's not cheap but that will all last you a long time are these Believe the bigger me. ones at least oh. no it's what the five? And they don't have their fake sriracha in there either no no it's 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 this is the good stuff that they got i mean you know nobody needs a two million oh. scoville i was gonna say please like they make a two million scoville yeah, yeah. So this is a, a, a solid introduction to hot sauces. If you've never done it before, or if you're interested, or if you've just done basic hot sauces. If I you're mean, hot they, sauce they curious. Make, it's oh, it's got, the, it's got yeah. the chrome caddy. That's why it's 55. Okay, this makes a lot more Ooh. sense now. So it's all the sauces yeah. in an official Tabasco chrome sauce caddy. Yeah, carry caddy. And they all taste good. They honestly do. So, you know, you, you're not going to burn your tongue off on any of these, really. But it's a good introduction to different flavors of spice. So do it. Enjoy yourself. Just try something different on your eggs in the morning. or if you Yeah, it's eggs a basket on eggs. It's good. It's yeah. Good. Oh, classic. I like, I like red hot. Pizza. Well, I mean, on pizza. Oh, yeah. It's a little the, disappointing, but yeah. The, the right. Tabasco flavor, for those who don't know, it's very high on the vinegar component. Yes. But, but. It's been aged for years. Yes. Look at the. No, well, and they ferment it. So you get some really nice yeah. flavors in there, and then they add the vinegar yeah. afterwards. The green one, the green pepper sauce from Tabasco, unbelievable. Ooh. And it's a very different taste. Good. It's more garlicky and. Yeah. It's, it's nice on fries. I love it on uh, like a burrito or something. I had it for yeah. the first time actually at a Qdoba. I'm like, what is this green Tabasco? It was it was fantastic. Anyway, but yeah, that two million Scoville unit rating is because technically a Tabasco pepper, properly processed, is two million Scovilles. Is it really? Well, they have yeah. There's the one version of Tabasco. But they don't actually the, put it out. No, they don't put it out. It's just the the pepper that they've named themselves after. Oh, I see. Okay. Because I was going to say I would buy that in a second because hot, real hot sauce has become insanely expensive. Really? Oh, oh yeah. No, I, I like I love a 1.5 mil or so, but it's a hundred bucks for about a, a little slightly larger than a Tabasco, a small Tabasco bottle, and I'm not spending that much That's money nuts. on hot sauce. Yeah, 
That's insane. I didn't know you could handle that much heat. It's oh, I, uh, I'm officially not allowed to judge the heat of anything for anyone else. Because okay. I will say, no, it's, it, there's, there's nothing there. It's a little bit of spice. And then the next thing I know, I'm like feed, force feeding them yogurt to try and uh, <laughs> stop them from crying and exploding. Jeremy, we need to get you on hot ones. Let's see how well. <laughs> oh, I wish. I you, wish. You don't I actually want to use yogurt. You want to use something acidic. Really? Uh, yep. And it kills the spice faster. So mm. like uh, lemonade yep. or something like that. Because all the cream does is it quickly, you know, extinguishes that, but then it And then it, it comes stayed. back. Yeah. And Josh, so, you know, this is why I give people yogurt. Because it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that feels so much better. Okay, thank you. I, I, <laughs> no, I need more yogurt. And then, you know, and 30 minutes later, they're puking up yogurt. So, yeah, that, that's great. Uh, yeah, but that's their problem, not mine. Yeah, it is. All right, like Jerry. I say, I'm officially not allowed to judge heat of any food for any of my friends or acquaintances. They don't trust me for a good reason. All right, Jeremy, your pick this week. All right, but I, I'm going to quickly delay before my pick to mention that the reason I'm sounding funny tonight is I'm trying out the Epos Impact 1060 A and C. It's designed specifically for speech applications, your Zooms and your Teams and stuff. So I wanted to give it a try here. And uh, honestly, compared to some of the other headsets that I've tried on the podcast, many of which were like, uh, yeah, no, don't even try that. Just, just take it off and go back to your mic. This is not bad, but it's also why I sound like I'm your pilot this evening. And we will be landing in Denver <laughs> a little bit later than expected. But uh, the local time there is, I don't know, what, uh, 1057? Sebastian, anyways, can we have pick. a little airplane noise behind him in the edit uh, when he does that? Next. <laughs> I'll just do it myself with a microphone. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's it. Yep. Just do that for sure. about four hours. You are now free mm -hmm. to move around the podcast. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. We realize you have a choice Anyways, in my the actual podcast. Oh, is, uh, no, <laughs> oh, Brett, I'm sorry I cut you off on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we appreciate that you have your choice right. in podcasts, but thank you for flying with us tonight. <laughs> No, Jeremy, uh, uh, your pick. Yeah. Both uh, Brett and I uh, enjoy our flexi spot tables. Uh, yep. I, if you're six foot taller or taller, I would not recommend their chairs. They're a little bit short, but they're having a big sale. Uh, it's sort of one of their anniversaries. And they're, they're doing some giveaways, which I don't know if you want to really play with or not, but hey, there is a chance you might get uh, some like a thousand dollars worth of uh, their equipment if you grab one of the orders but the thing is that everything is deeply discounted and it's changing over the week uh i believe it's the 21st that uh the the big sale and then everything sort of ends hey the so, more yeah, you buy if the you're more you save. For a standing desk hey they stole that from you <laughs> oh those are good deals so, if you're <laughs> hey, looking featured for a, by a, top um, youtuber linus tech tips yeah i know nice. i did apparently i didn't rate mm. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't give a good enough review to get on there, but yeah, tables, chairs. I have, I have one uh, of their dual beds, dual motors hammocks. as well. It works really good. You yeah. can get a standing desk there for one thirty nine. That's ridiculous. Yes. So yeah, if you're and, and this is sort of perfect for back to school, if you got a kid or you are one, uh, these things are relatively small, and yeah, you get a, a full standing desk with a whole bunch of accessories if you really want. So, hey, anyways, I thought it was worth mentioning. Thank you. I kind of really like this desk. What if you're a kid at heart? Then would you recommend it? Like us? Yes. Mm. Like Brett. Then Brett's he could young ride on the desk. Brett is whimsical. I'm, I remember when I first got one of these, I actually laid on the desk and, and actuated it just so I could see how close I could get to the ceiling. And I rode the desk up and down. I thought it was great fun. <laughs> Recommended. Did the vibration do anything for you? Or was it? I just enjoyed the whole sensation <laughs> of getting everything. closer and further away from the ceiling. It was kind of fun. Mm. 
But we were just talking about whimsy. I thought that was a perfect example. No, that's not whimsy. That's more of a more it carnal um, uh, thing. Um, but is it though? Is it? Yeah, is, is it, it? semi carnally? Is All right. It? Uh, how about uh, your pick, Brett? Well, just dive right into that. You know what? We need mats in our lives, and I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about play mats, mouse mats, desk mats, all kinds of different mats. Why not? Were stop you over sitting on one of these when you were riding your desk? I was not. None of these aren't magic oh. flying mats. They're not that kind of mat. However, I have there's, used, there's still uh, Weeboo this... mats. Mats. We, no one's going to let me talk. I could. <laughs> Weeboo. Brett's pen. I've but... used this. Ah, I've used this company a couple of times and had some play mats and some mouse mats made with my own uh, artwork or other artwork I've I've sort of changed over and you know done some custom stuff to it, put little sentences and writing over other like memes and stuff like that. Anyway, it's a they're having a sale on their very large uh, mats. Uh, I think they're forty eight by twenty four. They're having their it's right up at the top. XXL extended mats are all twenty five percent off. So it's a really good deal if you need a very big desk mat or a mouse mat or something like that. I'm kind of really liking that Dapper Cthulhu one. You could put this R2 picture, other side, R2 picture. Oh, okay. Car. Yeah. You made a mouse mat. So of they'll that. do, yeah, they'll do custom mats, um, or you could pick some of their own artwork, and they've got like four or five different sizes. So go check them out. Ink is, gaming. Is that a Fiat R2? Uh, I believe it might be, or a, yeah. Oh, oh, with that uh, punto, fiat, fiat punto, maybe. Oh, oh and then anyway. by the way, real quick, my pick is that deal at BH Photo. You're not going to beat two nineteen ninety nine for the limited edition version of the. Remember, this card launched at two eighty nine ninety nine, went down to two forty nine ninety nine. Get it before it's gone. You know, Intel's not going to be selling these limited edition cards forever. They're limited. Limited. You can't even buy the A770 anymore. The new egg listing just says out of stock, even though it went up to like four. What the heck is a Payboo? Payboo is their credit card. If you use Payboo, you don't pay sales tax. They give you an instant discount equivalent to your sales tax. Ah. So it's like the one place you can still shop online, at least in my state, without paying sales tax. Because they give you a discount. Payboo, Weeboo, it's all the same. No, it's not. I, Weeboo, I have a Weeboo, Weeboo, Weeboo card, and I love it. Weeboo, I'm Yubu, not sponsoring Weeboo. this. <clears throat> Sorry, Weeboo. <laughs> Isn't it Weeaboo? Or is it... I yeah, don't know. It's got it's like Weeboo, another Weeboo, Weeboo, Weeboo. I in there. Most people just say Weeb. I find that I find that offensive as an anime watcher and uh, <laughs> Japanese role-playing game enthusiast. Weebo, weebo. Why don't you go hug your pillow? I don't have any of that kind of oh. stuff. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of playing Final Fantasy VII for hundreds of hours of my life. What is your you favorite anime far. character as a shaped pillow? What, a shaped what, pillow. what would that be? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. Like <laughs> it's not that kind of show. I think it's time to end the show. It's been another week and we we did it. We talked about Intel Arc as much as we possibly could. We covered the latest topics and we called each other names in segments of the show that will probably be deleted in the final edit. But, you know, tune in live and you'll see it all. You'll see us um, make the sausage, if you will. And, uh, We'll watch Brett ride his desk up and down yep. over and over slowly. With should or without I, a should pillow I make a video? or mat. Should I make a video? I should. I should probably make a quick. Yes. One of those, like a short. Yeah. A yeah. short of just You're riding short, the. Just you going up and down. Riding no, 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 you got you to you increase the, uh, decrease the frame rate so it, it goes faster. Because yeah. those <laughs> things rise and fall really slow. But. Mm -hmm. but uh, if, but if you do it, these uh, time lapse. Those those yeah. dual motor flexi desks are real movers. Let me tell you that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. On that note, I'm gonna end the recording. <laughs> <laughs>